Hello everybody, and welcome to Tuesday's Tales. I had a meeting tonight, and I didn't want to miss reading our story, so I went ahead and recorded it, so it's kind of live, but it's just not quite live. But I'm glad that you're here with me to read this book with me. I'm excited about reading it, and there are some weeks where I'm reading the book online, and it's the very first time I've ever read it at all. It's not like I read this in advance and do a lot of practicing, which I guess I probably ought to, but sometimes it's more fun to discover all the funny parts with you. And if you are a parent watching this with your kid, this is, that's even more fun because I love The Office. It's so silly and fun and random. So we're going to be reading today, The Office, A Day at Dunder Mifflin Elementary. Written by Rob Perlman and illustrated by Melanie Dim. So let's get started. <laughs> the Office, a day at Dunder Mifflin Elementary. All right, so we're on a scavenger hunt. This is fun. We're going to be looking for a pretzel, <laughs> which is great if you watch The Office. Kelly's birthday mugs, Stanley's crossword, Pam's office painting, beet plants, <laughs> the Dundee Award, <laughs> sprinkles, Angela's cat, stapler and gelatin, yeah, Dwight bobblehead, World's Best Boss Mutt, Scroot Bucks, and Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. Yeah! Okay. So here we go. I'm Michael Scott. I'm a student at Dunder Mifflin Elementary. When Principal Wallace and Miss Levinson asked me to be the class line leader, I told them I needed two days before I could start. There's the mug. Oh, <gasps> look, it's Pam! I think that could be Toby, but I know that's Pam. Because that's how long it took my mom to get this made. And now everyone will know I am the world's best line leader. Oh, it's, it's Jim and Pam and Phyllis and Vance for Vance Refrigeration. Yeah. Oh, and oh no, guy downstairs in the warehouse that plays piano. I cannot remember his name. Any actual office fan is going to shoot me. And oh, Dwight. Yes. And Beat. Oh, yes! This is great! Okay, I'm sorry. I know that you actually came for me to read the book, but I'm excited that there's all these fun things in here. Michael's nice. He tells a lot of funny jokes. Jokes? Yes. Funny? Not really. But I think he's too excited about being the line leader. Yeah, he makes these big deals out of things, like the time he thought our class turtles went missing when we were just cleaning their tank. Where are the turtles? Michael is really cool, but I don't think he should be line leader by himself. He needs an assistant, someone who is smart, a good friend, and has a black belt in karate, like me. Yes, Dwight. This class is a mess, Michael, Dwight complains. You should let someone help you be the line leader. I don't need help. I can do it by myself, I say. Oh, there's sprinkles. Anybody else see anything else we're supposed to be looking for? But I do see sprinkles. And the crossword puzzle with Stanley! 
Yay. For real, Michael? Kelly butts in. Please, you need all the help you can get, Stanley adds. Kelly! Fine, you can be assistant to the line leader, I tell Dwight so everyone will stop bugging me. I don't really need help. Assistant line leader, I accept, he says. Assistant to the line leader, I correct him. I'm going to show this class that I am the world's best line leader. It's time for a meeting, I yell. Come on, everyone, Dwight says, nice and orderly. Yeah, nice and orderly. Rit dit 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 do, adds Andy. But I have math to learn, <laughs> complains Oscar. <laughs> A mistake plus eleven equals seven, says Kevin. Huh? <laughs> meetings are fun, says Aaron. What are meetings like? That's oh, Kevin. And Aaron, I love this so much. Once the class is settled, I make my announcement. I will lead the first line into a big party. Angela, can you throw one in five minutes? Oh, shrewd dollars. Oh, plan a party in only five minutes, she asks. Ryan, Phyllis, Meredith... You can help, I suggest. Do you really think this is a good idea? Asks Ryan. Of course it's a good idea, I say. Parties are always a good idea. Oh, Dwight Bobblehead. This is fun. I'm enjoying this very much. I just hope this party is better than my last birthday party. I was allergic to the pony that my mom rented and had to spend the whole day inside. Achoo! That was a really great party. There was a pony. I wasn't invited. Yeah, that's definitely Toby. <laughs> After I end the meeting, Dwight has even more questions for me. Michael, how are we going to line up for the party? Order is very important. The first person gets all the good snacks, and you know what it's like to be last. I have a plan, I tell him. I don't have a plan, but don't tell anyone. They'll think I'm the worst line leader ever. Um, I say and look around the room. What if we line up alphabetically? Actually, Oscar starts to say, we haven't all learned the alphabet yet, Toby adds. Everyone line up, I declare. But our first line is not right at all. This is not alphabetical, I shout. Well, you know, almost. Kevin is definitely not supposed to be at the front. <laughs> and Angela knows it. Oh, here's Meredith! Ah. This is so great. This is great. So then, I have the class line up shortest to tallest. But that doesn't work because Kelly's legs are little. She doesn't walk as fast as everyone else. Tallest to shortest doesn't work either because Dwight can't see around Kevin's head. Being a line leader is hard. <gasps> Next, I have the class race so they can line up from fastest to slowest. I try to get Stanley to run, but he doesn't listen. <laughs> Ugh! Nothing works, not even the paper airplane throwing contest. What am I going to do? They're all going to think I'm the world's worst line leader. 
Michael Scott's Paper Company. Just when I think I'll have to cancel the party, Pam asks me, You okay, Michael? You bet, I reply. I just don't know what to do. My mom taught me you should always ask for help when you need it, Pam said. Everyone, even line leaders, need to ask for help sometimes. Whoa, Pam, your mom is an amazing lady. Attention, Dunder Mifflin Elementary! Everyone, even line leaders like me, needs to ask for help sometimes. Fact, Dwight declares. So please help me be the world's best line leader, I say. How do you want to line up? So, okay, here are their suggestions. And I find when you ask a lot of people for help, you get a lot of suggestions. It just happens. So there's the beet harvesting suggestion, paper orders, bankruptcy, <laughs> pretzel toppings. I guess you line up by favorite pretzel toppings, line up by cuteness, or line up by the buddy system. <laughs> the class has amazing ideas, but I choose the buddy system. Everyone holds hands with a buddy, and it works. The class is in a great line. Way to go, line leader, Jim says. That was a really good choice, Michael, Daryl says. That's his name. This is Daryl. I'm sorry I forgot, but I did know now. As assistant line leader, I agree, Dwight declares. Assistant to the line leader, I tell him with a smile. Oh, look at all this friendship. There's, oh, oh, hi, Georgie. Hello, Georgie. Look at all the friendship. Jim and Pam. Aw, and Merit. Oh, and everybody's all together. This is good. Michael is a pretty good line leader. He knew when to ask for help today. Who knows what will happen tomorrow, though. You never know with Michael, but today was a good day. Today was not a good day. But then Kelly gave me an oatmeal raisin cookie. I hate oatmeal raisin cookies. Aww. So look at all of the friendship that they're having at their party together and that they threw in five minutes. I'm Michael Scott. I'm a line leader at Dunder Mifflin Elementary and I lead a great class. The end. <laughs> I enjoyed that. And even if you're not an Office fan, then you can still enjoy it. It's That was cute. Oh boy. So, our Bible story for today. Let's find it. All right. Today, story is called The Good Shepherd. David was a shepherd, but when God looked at him, he saw a king. Sure enough, when David grew up, that's just what he became. And David was a great king. He had a heart like God's heart, full of love. Now that didn't mean he was perfect, because he did some terrible things. He even murdered a man. No, David made a big mess of his life. But God can take even the biggest mess and make it work in his plan. I need a new heart, Lord, David prayed, because mine is full of sin. Make me clean inside. And God heard David's prayer. He forgave David and made David a promise. I will make you great, David. And one day a king will be born in your family, and he will heal the whole world. Did you know that David was a songwriter, too? In fact, his songs were so good, they might have been in the top 40 charts, if they'd been invented back then. 
David's songs are like prayers. They're called psalms. And this one is called the Song of the Shepherd. It's probably number one on the psalm charts. And it goes like this. God is my shepherd, and I am his little lamb. He feeds me, he guides me, he looks after he looks after me, and I have everything I need. And inside my heart is very quiet, as quiet as lying still in soft green grass, in a meadow, by a little stream. And even when I walk through the dark, scary, lonely places, I won't be afraid, because my shepherd knows where I am. He is here with me, he keeps me safe, he rescues me, he makes me strong and brave. He is getting wonderful things ready for me, especially for me, everything I ever dreamed of. And he fills my heart full of happiness that I can't hold it in. And wherever I go, I know God's never stopping, never giving up, unbreaking, always and forever love will go too. And God gave David that song to sing to his people so they could know that he loved them and would always look after them like a shepherd loves his sheep. And one day, God was going to do something that would inspire thousands upon thousands of new songs. God was going to show his people once and for all just how much he loved them. Another shepherd was coming, a greater shepherd. He would be called the Good Shepherd. And this shepherd was going to lead all of God's lambs back to the place where they had always belonged, close to God. The end. So, next week, let us look through our choices. I'm not going to look in the bag. All right, so next week our choices are oh, another pigeon book. Yay! The Pigeon Wants a Puppy or Daisy Head Maisie by Dr. Seuss. So these are our choices for next week. And go ahead and vote for them now or you can vote next week. And I'll see you then. And you'll get to see Georgie playing with a piece of table. Check it. Bye!